Welcome back, my dear fell pals, to Orchids for Dummies, a place where you can get your life. In today's video, I will be showing you guys how to repot a Phalaenopsis orchid that has no roots, how to stabilize it in the pot to keep it from tipping over, okay? We're going to be using my Phalaenopsis Sogo Yenlin Wilson, which is a species, which is a problem child. So if you have that orchid that just keeps falling out of the pot, this is definitely a video that you want to stay tuned. tune foul pals so the first thing that you want to do and keep in mind that bark fresh out of the pack is going to have a a lower ph also is going to be um, nitrogen deficient for your phalaenopsis orchids so you want to make sure that you are giving them a higher dosage of nitrogen after you repot them the first thing first, make sure that overnight you soak your bark fresh out of the media because it's also going to hold um, moisture. It's not going to hold moisture the way that it should. So even though you water your orchids once a week, the pot is going to dry out too soon, which is going to dry your roots out. So to avoid all that, here in the orchid community, we like to go ahead and soak our bark overnight. And as you can see, all of the black Film. Now, this is Orchiata bark. All of this black substance, this is actually why you want to wash your bark off as well because all of that Phalaenopsis orchids, they, they are sensitive, honey. They don't like all of this residue in their pots. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this bark washed off and you got to stay now, Welcome back. I want to share with you guys, even after, after the second time, of me um, washing the media off, this is how dark and dirty the water came out to be. Now, I don't even wanna get a testing strip to show you guys that this is going to be acidic in your pots. So just go ahead and take that extra step, washing off bark fresh out of the pack. And that will help sustain your Phalaenopsis orchid in particular, honey, because like I said, those roots are very sensitive, especially if they are coming from sphagnum moss, okay, something that is very nutrient retentive, something that is water retentive, and also something that is just soft and fluffy that promotes um, root development. Because this bark, even though with it being small, is very rigid. Okay, it's very rigid and um, it actually has some charcoal in it, which, okay, you know, could hurt your phalaenopsis roots that are being still developed. Those little bitty nubs coming out of the base, those are the um, tips that I'm talking about, not your long, healthy roots. Okay, so stay now, while I am washing that bark off, I actually have my um, phalaenopsis sogo yellin sitting in some water which is filled with um, fish emulsion, which is going to be that seaweed kelp. Okay, now soaking it in seaweed kelp before repotting your Phalaenopsis orchids is going to give it that hormone stimulation that it needs to get ahead and start producing new roots. Now, if this doesn't work, honey, nothing will stay. So welcome back, foul pals. Now that I have washed my bark about 10 times, and it still has a little residue, but that is going to be okay. I have my Phalaenopsis species, Sogo Yenlin coffee, okay? <laughs> I have her now drenched in the seaweed kelp, and she is ready to be repotted. Um, now, some of you like to cut roots, take them off, and stuff like that. If it has those strings left to it, I just pull the cover off and leave it that way because the Phalaenopsis orchid, it definitely has to have some type of way to um, absorb nutrients, okay? And you can't always leave it up to the leaves of the Phalaenopsis orchids when you are foliar feeding because one of the only nutrients that I know that is going to be able to be foliar fed to your Phalaenopsis orchid through leaves is going to be calcium. Okay, calcium and maybe even magnesium, but nit nitrogen, which is what they really need um, when developing new leaves. Okay, um, you don't you don't have a way for them to do it if you cut all of the roots off. So, 
Right now, this is not going to be an orchid that we're going to heavily fertilize. What we're talking about is how to stabilize it into the pot. And what I am going to use, what my secret is, is going to be some twist ties. This is not going to hurt your orchid at all. The only thing that you are doing is just making sure that it does not get to wobbling and falling out of the pot once those new roots um, gets to being developed. You want to make sure to wash your hands very well before and after. Before and after, darling. Or you will get um, mold on your fingers. And so this twist tight is actually is what's going to help maintain it in the pot. And if you wanted to, um, you could do um, another one or as many as you like because it's going to grow over it. I promise you it's not going to hurt your orchids at all. This was advice that was given to me by that grower, um, the guy that grows the pethiopetalums from my previous video, How to Rebloom Any Orchid. He is the dear fail pal that told us about this nice little trick. So that's why it's so important for you to go out and join a local society. So that's how you're going to do it. And um, I'm going to prevent it from being over potted. So what I'm going to do is pot it down a little bit and just keep in mind. So the first thing that I like to do is add a little organic fertilizer at the bottom, which is going to be eggshells. And after I add the eggshells, which, you know, some is going to come out of the pot. It's okay, baby. It's okay. <clears throat> I like to then go ahead and add some perlite. That is going to help with drainage. And some of that might fall out of the bottom of the pot as well. Um, the reason I have this orchid over here, because this is a three inch pot and it is very hard to find three inch pots. So if you guys know a place where I can get some three inch pots, please let me know because this is a four or five inch pot and I'm still with the phalaenopsis that have no roots. Okay, it's still going to be in danger of being over potted. So once I put that first layer of bark on. Put the eggshell calcium back in there. Push the twist ties down, just like that. And make sure that you are actually putting bark on the twist ties. Because remember the twist ties is what is going to anchor it into the pot. Okay. Now, I've been struggling with this phalaenopsis since I purchased it with it having a terminal spike. So, I'm just still doctoring on it. This is the last step, honey, giving her the best of the best treatment. If it doesn't work, honey, mama try it. Okay, mama try it. So, that's good, just like that. I'm going to put a little sphagnum moss on top. You see? And I will keep you guys updated, but you got to stay tuned. Until...